first and foremost i want to say thanks to everyone which has really contributed with suggestions on rackets that i need to maybe think of or try out as i am looking for replacements that's the first thing i really want to say you've given me a lot of ideas a lot of inspiration a lot of things to consider especially with respect to maybe some rackets that i've never really thought of strings that i was not even aware of or willing to try so that's really been helpful i never thought that trying to find a new racket it will be quite a tough process i think it is tough because it's such a personal choice there are a lot of factors that you consider you know how confident you would be with certain types of rackets and i never even knew there were so many factors to really consider well i knew about it but now that i'm actually making that hard choice for myself it's actually a bit of i won't say a burden it's a bit of a cognitive overload so there have been so many things to consider if i wanted an evenly balanced racket if i want something that's head heavy or head light I think one thing that I am sort of happy about with narrowing down the decision is the fact that I've obviously decided to look for a teardrop shape racket. But the search still continues, but I think I have narrowed it down to four. So the first one is the Dunlop Sonic Core Revelation Pro Lite, which is a headlight uh, racket all round. And it is something that I have seen another player play with. I have not tried it. There are not too many people with Dunlops around PE per se. And I don't think it's in our local shop. So I'll have to, if I go with that direction or that route, I'll have to bring it in from a shop or shop online. So that is one of the considerations. The other one is the head slim body. The one that is used by Paul Cole. I think it was suggested by a couple of people from on the comments. I've also seen the Reddit thread about the racket. And that sort of made me sort of think if there's a possibility of entertaining it. A lot of people have actually compared it to the air shaft, which is something I'm going to talk about now. And not to say that I need to go on people's perceptions, but you know, other people have tried the racket. It's also quite an expensive racket, so that's probably another reason why not so many people have it compared to let's say some of the other other alternatives that we're going to talk about so for the last two obviously not that i am technifiber loyal or sponsored or anything like that but definitely technifiber has a place in my heart so the decision is obviously between the cannonball which is the miguel rodriguez version of the carboflex or very similar to the heritage from what i understand maybe a bit more head heavy and the last one being the air shaft 125 which is the Mohammed El Shabagi signature racket. So these are the things that, or these are the rackets that I have narrowed it down to these four. And I still have to take a bit of time to decide. I believe I have a few players at the club that might have one or two of these rackets. So it'll be maybe a lot easier to try them out and maybe make a verdict or yeah, I guess select a final racket as the decision. So I'm giving myself up until Monday to make that uh, decision. I think during this whole process, as I've mentioned, it is a very personal process. It is a, a dis I won't say a big decision because yeah, at the end of the day, yes, you can obviously buy one, find that you're not happy with it, sell it, and then get another one. But I think my specific dilemma is the fact that I do feel the confidence of having two of the same rackets in my bag that if anything had to happen in terms of strings breaking or the racket had to snap again, that I have a spare. So I guess everything that I'm deciding now is always is maybe influenced by the fact that I am going to buy two of these rackets. So that is one thing to consider. I think I just want to shout out to Gary Whedon. He owns the racket shop G Strings and Things. If you're looking for an online shop which will sell obviously so many rackets as well as shoes, even though there is a shoe shortage, I'll leave a link in the description to Gary's website where you can find obviously a lot of his products not his products, but a lot of products which might not be available elsewhere around South Africa. He's also a South African squash legend, a PSA, former PSA player, level two coach. He's played so many international opponents and he's represented South Africa on so many occasions. And I obviously met him in person during the previous Lawn Park closed tournament and had a conversation with him because everything was obviously only over the phone when I bought rackets from him. So we've had a lot of discussions about things that I should consider, things that I should be mindful of, the strings that he sort of suggests, what tension comes with certain rackets, you know, factory default. So there's been a lot to consider and I've taken his advice quite seriously. Not to say it will influence my decision, but there's definitely a influencing factor when advice is coming from a South African squash legend. So yeah, he has obviously maybe suggested, for the first time I asked him, um, he did obviously opt for and suggest the cannonball as well as the air shaft as alternatives. He also listed, I guess, some of the things I need to be aware of when it comes to those, as well as even what should what I should consider when it comes to the Revelation Pro Lite as well. So taking his advice into consideration, I'm pretty sure it's going to be 
a very big deciding factor on the choice that I will make at the end of the day. Thanks to everyone for their suggestions, uh, all the comments that they have left below the videos, all of the considerations that they've sort of brought to my attention to make when it comes to choosing a racket. I will hopefully have a final decision by Monday. Take care, cheers.